Today is August 24th. It's the 237th day of the year and ah, that's tough. This is the On This Day podcast. On this day in 410, the Visigoths sack Rome. In the year 410, the Roman Empire is just massive. It stretches from Mesopotamia to North Africa to the Atlantic Ocean and up to Britain. And during this period, the capital is moved from Rome to Ravenna, which is easier to defend. Because the Goths, Eastern Germanic tribes of nomads, they've been laying siege to Western capitals. The Visigoths, a branch of the Goths, have laid siege to Rome before. In 408 AD, they lift the first siege after receiving a ransom payment. The next year in 409, they lay siege again, and this time it's lifted when King Alaric of the Visigoths is made a top-level Roman commander. But when the Visigoth king is scheduled to meet with Roman Emperor Honorius, King Alaric is attacked by Roman soldiers. So Alaric and his Visigoths lay siege to Rome a third time. And on this day in the year 410 AD, the Visigoths enter Rome through the Salarian Gate and pillage the city over the course of the next few days. They destroy all of the prominent buildings and monuments in Rome. After three days, the Visigoths leave the city, loaded down with spoils and loot, and with hundreds of Roman citizens in tow, now Visigoth slaves, among them the emperor's half-sister. When the Visigoths sack Rome on this day in 410, not only are Roman citizens horrified by the destruction, but the shock waves are felt all throughout the Western Roman Empire, which will collapse in little more than half a century's time. St. Jerome writes, quote, In one city, the whole world perished. On this day in 1814, British troops invade Washington, D.C. and set the place on fire. The War of 1812 has been raging for more than two years at this point. It's a war that the U.S. starts with the United Kingdom over trade restrictions and British support for Native American tribes on the frontier who are fighting U.S. expansion to the north and west. It's a war the U.S. starts with the United Kingdom over trade restrictions and British support for Native American tribes on the frontier who are fighting U.S. expansion to the north and west. The British have been hamstrung in this war because they're also fighting Napoleon in Europe. But by 1814, all that's wrapped up after the defeat and exile of Napoleon in April of that year. And the British can now focus all of their energy and resources on the Americans. The Brits plan a campaign of death and destruction in major American cities on the eastern seaboard. They choose Washington, D.C. for their first target due to the fact that it's relatively undefended and politically significant. When President James Madison hears that British troops are landing in Chesapeake Bay, he begins preparing for the defense of the capital city. But when he sees them marching towards the city in late August 1814, he flees the White House for Brookville, Maryland, along with other members of the government. In 1814, the White House is referred to mainly as the President's Residence, or the President's House, and only informally as the White House. The White House as the official name for the building and the administration will come many years later. In 1814, before Madison leaves his residence, he and his wife Dolly gather up as many important documents as they can with the help of their 15-year-old servant and slave, Paul Jennings. And Dolly Madison makes sure to save the giant portrait of George Washington. It's a copy of the painting known as the Lansdowne Portrait, a depiction of George Washington standing with his hand extended in gesture, painted by Gilbert Stuart. According to Jennings, they cut the painting from the frame, and it's carried out of the residence for safekeeping by the doorman, a Frenchman named John Sousa, 
and the gardener, known to history only as McGraw. By late afternoon on this day in 1814, British troops enter the city and begin setting fires. They loot the Capitol building before torching it. The blaze destroys the entire contents of the Library of Congress, which will be re-established after the war with the purchase of more than 6,000 books from Thomas Jefferson's personal library. The British then move up Pennsylvania Avenue to burn down the White House, but not before they enjoy a sumptuous meal that had been prepared for a hastily canceled banquet planned by Dolly for that evening. The British burn down the Treasury, they burn down the Department of War building, they burn down a number of other public buildings as well. And after nightfall on this day in 1814, the conflagration can be seen as far away as Baltimore, nearly 40 miles to the north. The British intend the sacking of Washington to discourage Americans and break their spirit. But the senseless destruction has exactly the opposite effect. Within weeks, 15,000 American volunteers repel the British from Baltimore in the battle that will inspire Francis Scott Key to write the words that become the national anthem, the Star-Spangled Banner. And by February of 1815, the War of 1812 ends in a stalemate. After the British burn Washington, D.C. to the ground on this day in 1814, there are some who want to rebuild the capital city elsewhere, or at least the President's house. But James Madison insists the residence be rebuilt on its original and current site in D.C., using the walls that remain standing after the fire. By 1817, the executive mansion is rebuilt, and the Lansdowne portrait of George Washington, carried to safety by the slave, the doorman, and the gardener, now hangs in the East Room of the White House. There are 129 days left in the year. On This Day is produced by me, Dave Schultz. Thank you very much for listening. On this day in 79, Mount Vesuvius erupts. August 24th is the day most scholars agree the eruption in southern Italy occurs. And when Mount Vesuvius erupts on this day in the year 79, it devastates the commune of Pompeii and the town of Herculaneum, burying the people and buildings of Pompeii under more than 80 feet of volcanic ash, just a day after the citizens celebrate the festival of the Roman god of fire. So if you're still listening, note to self, August 24th, good day to get out of town. Talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.